right, all right. Thanks for coming, everyone. Now, I, I know these weekly election campaign oh, review stop. meetings are a crashing bore, but we're two weeks out and neck and neck with the, the wretched socialists, so we at least have to look like we care. Yeah. 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 Now, now, uh, Jaunty's going to give us a quick review of last week's campaign, and then we'll all go and get pissed. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Bunty. Well, there are two weeks to go, and the polls are tight, and without wanting to disrespect the manifest will and wisdom of the Australian people... Oh, no, no, oh, no, no. I think we'll shit it in. All right. <laughs> Marvellous. The next item is the Facebook leaders' debate. Now, that all went very well. Lots of likes and faves and upvotes, or whatever they are. Although, every time the PM mentioned jobs and growth, Ads for Viagra and wet wipes kept popping up in that column along the side, so we'll have to keep an eye on that one for next time. Now, still, still on Facebook, turns out our candidate in McEwen is not even living in the electorate. Uh, I mean, we've all done it, but he had been posting complaints on Facebook about the bad service from a Domino's pizza joint, which is 40 kilometres away from his electorate. Uh, people started to think it was a bit sus, and it turns out the pizza place is just around the corner from where he actually lives in South Yarra, the idiot. Oh, oh you uh, Now, 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 all, all the parties do it, of course. I mean, do you think whenever any ALP candidate orders home delivery from Red Rooster, you see what I did there? Uh, do you think it's in their electorate, or when the inner city Greens candidate gets gluten-free tofu puffs at the cycle through from the local transgender bison franchise, you might think they don't actually live in a biodynamic yurt in the Otways. There's not the point, of course, but this idiot broke the golden rule, don't get caught! Oh, exactly. We, we won't disendorse him. No, nobody cares. And it's a semi-rural seat, so I doubt most of them can even read. Well, steady on, Jaunty. We in the Liberal Party have a great affinity with our rural brethren. Lots of Liberals are country members. Quite. Anyway, almost time to get on the source. Uh, last thing today is we've asked Senator Sinodinus to come in and explain parakelia for us. Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, what even is parakelia? Well, I didn't recall at first, and then when I finally did remember, I realised I hadn't been told about it, even though it was my job to tell people about it, and I'd neglected to mention it to myself. Anyway, when, when I finally remembered, and, and I'm reading from the minutes of that first meeting where we set it up, minutes I forgot to remember to destroy, so I could say I didn't recall them later, <laughs> but I digress. I believe it was Jaunty at that meeting who said, why don't we set up a company to spy on our constituents, record every detail about them that we can find, then sell that information back to our MPs who pay us for the privilege with taxpayer dollars. And if there's any money left over, we give it to the Liberal Party, which is already us. And I said, well, we spy on the voters, they pay for it, and if we have anything left over, we keep it. And he said, yes. And it seemed like a sensible notion, so we did it. All those in favour say aye. Aye! I declare the motion carried. Remove it from the record. <laughs> Okay, well, part one, line one, I messed up with the timing, so I'm pretty sure my recording of this week's Outsiders will be longer than 15 minutes and 30 seconds, which means it will not be uploadable from my phone. So, um, golly gosh, sorry about that. Um, to explain the reference to Parakelion, yeah, it's, uh, it's not lawful in New South Wales and a few other places in Australia for property developers or mining companies to donate to political parties. The way the Liberal Party has got around that there, they get the developer or the mining company to donate to the federal Liberal Party. And there's no prohibition on federal donations to the Liberal Party or to any parties. Um, and then the federal Liberal Party having a bit of spare money lying around, they make that money available to the state Liberal Party. And uh, 
it meant that Tony Abbott was able to get a fair bit of money. Um, I think there was a, an outfit called the Warunga Foundation, um, something else to do with progress or, yeah, they, 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 they have um, very carefully constructed inspirational names that have no semantic content. Um, but then this business of Parakelion came up where the Liberal Party owns all of the shares in a company. The company does what they call market research, hence First Dog on the Moon was saying they spy on the voters. And then using taxpayer funding, individual MPs buy the services of Parakelion to tell them what the voters in their electorate are thinking. I don't think these services are subject to tender, so it's not as if the Member of Parliament advertises and, and calls for market research companies to come and submit their quotes for what it will cost to go out and poll the electorate and find out what they think about dog droppings on the footpath or you know, one-legged lesbians having motorcycle accidents on wooden bridges in the rain on a Sunday evening when the moon is full. Whatever the question is, no, they don't actually get market quotes or tenders. They just give the job to Parakelion, and Parakelion charges as much as they like. And the quality of the research is whatever they care to provide. And then Parakelion makes a profit, and Parakelion is owned by the Liberal Party, so then Parakelion distributes its profit back to the Liberal Party, which then uses the taxpayer-funded market research to generate money to be spent on campaigning for the Liberal Party members. And... Yeah, Arthur Sinodinus is the secretary of the Liberal Party and he claims not to know anything about any of this. It's why he was kind of suspended from duties for half of last year while they looked into a, a thing called Waterwheel Holdings in Sydney, of which he, he was on the board of Waterwheel. He was the Liberal Party's treasurer. As a director of Waterwheel, he got Waterwheel to give money to the Liberal Party and he claimed not to have any knowledge as the Liberal Party treasurer that Waterwheel, the property developer, had been donating to the Liberal Party. That, And he was on both giving and receiving ends and he claims to have no memory of it. Yeah. So that's what First Dog was on about. Um, the big international news is, of course, when a 29-year-old New York-born American has gone a long way out of his way to demonstrate why it's really stupid to raise your children to be terrified of homosexuality to the point where rather than admit that they are a homosexual, they will secretly use gay dating apps, they will secretly go to a gay bar, and then presumably when they pick up a dose of the clap and go home and give it to their wife and she finds out and the whole scene melts down, then on a fucking guilt trip, they go back to the gay bar with an AR-15 Colt automatic rifle and kill 49 people and injure 53 others. And then, rather than surrender when the police show up, the closet homosexual chooses to die in the gay bar. And Donald Trump wants to claim that that proves that he was right in suggesting that Muslim immigration to America be cancelled, prohibited, called to a standstill on the grounds that the 29-year-old American who took his homophobia to the gay bar and d distributed the seeds of death from his psychological ballistic penis extender. His parents were Afghan and when they got the bloke's father in front of the camera to say how much he deplored the actions of his son, what did daddy say? Oh, he should never have done that. Everybody knows that only God should punish the homosexuals. So that's, that's where a young fellow the 29-year-old, got all of his ideas about uh, how and why he needed to be doing what he was doing. He was raised to be a homophobe by an Afghan migrant living in New York. So that was pretty bad. What was particularly evil was that when the Democrats decided to try and have a long speech in Congress talking about gun law reform, the speech went on for 15 hours. They had no hope of getting their bill through because the Republicans control both Congress and the Senate in America. But here's, here's, here's the hilarious bit, and I use hilarious in its sardonic, sarcastic Australian 
vernacular form. The hilarious bit is that during the 15-hour filibuster speech talking about reforming the gun laws, there were 48 shootings in the excited states of Norte Armed Americano. And Donald Trump thinks that more people should have more guns. So there, there's this crazy disconnect going on in the American public. Um, four million American households have at least one AR-15 rifle. Four million. 25% of the American population owns at least one firearm. The other 75% don't have any, but there's a lot of people who have 10 or 15. There's very few people who only have one gun. And the fact remains that based on hospital admissions and admissions to mortuaries, they asked the question, who owned the gun that fired the shot that put the person in the hospital or in the morgue? And the answer comes back, it was their own gun. That's the most likely thing. Or it was the gun owner's partner, somebody who lives in the house of the gun owner, the gun owner's neighbour, a complete stranger on the street. Finally, way down at the bottom of the list, you get some criminal miscreant in the commission of a crime who was actually stopped by the gun owner. It's, it's less than 1% of all gun deaths are caused by righteous people defending themselves against criminals. The entire premise of the American gun raid is bullshit. Which brings us to the great British islands, which are attempting to uh, have a referendum on whether or not they want to undo their decision 30, 40 years ago to go into the European Economic Union. They want to bow out of the European community. And up in Yorkshire, some idiot ran up to a lady politician and screamed, put Britain first, and shot her with a homemade gun, and then stabbed her, and then kicked her while she was dying. And when they got him in court, and they said, and what's your name? He said, what was it? Death to the traitors, and put Britain first. That's his name. Britain first is, by the way, an extreme right-wing political agitprop group, I wouldn't necessarily call them a party, but yeah, Britain First is the name of a bunch of loudmouths in Britain who want to come out of the European Union. Well, who knows, maybe England will start buying Australian butter and wool from New Zealand and things will go back to what they were in the 1960s. You know, is, is that what they're after? Um, it's been hilarious to watch the economic community around the world become increasingly hysterically terrified at the, oh, the economic consequences if Britain gets out of the economic union, oh, the GDP will drop by only 1% if they stay in, 1.59%, whereas if they pull out, it'll drop by 4.5%. Oh, yeah. Look, just for the lols, I want to see England come out of the British Union. I want to see Scotland come out of the, the British Union. I'd like to see it all devolve back into little local council areas and municipalities and and uh, yeah we'll balkanize the whole thing you know because at least that way there won't be any nation against nation scale warfare if we just balkanize back down to a municipal level we'll only ever have one village versus another village and you know life will be relatively speaking more peaceful because no village will have a nuclear weapon except perhaps in the excited states, in the smoking remains of whatever China leaves left there after Donald Trump becomes president and picks a nuclear shit fight over the uh, Spratly Islands. And why would you want to fight over a, a dredged sand island on a tidal rock in the face of global warming? Now, every 10 years, the sea level's going up 10 centimetres at the moment. Why, why would you want to fight over an artificially constructed sand reef? Yeah, that's what Trump wants to do. It's what Obama's doing at the moment. It's what the Australian government is assisting them in doing. I'm pretty sure that uh, Trump, will, yeah, Trump, Trump will have a fight over it. Um, going to make sure that I don't run out of time on this one. So uh, warbles on a lot to YouTube. Happy Sunday, the nineteenth. Ciao.